Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Too Clever Mafia podcast. And what is that? What, what, what is that, AJ? Oh, no. Sounds spooky. Oh, welcome to the Too Clever Mafia podcast. What is AJ up to? What is he? I am your host, Too Clever Mafia. And we are in the special Halloween episode 2020. Yes, we are. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I like what you did there. I like what you did there. Great job, AJ. Great job. Hey. Ooh, this is a this is a good beat. <laughs> Whoa, wow. Just wow, AJ. Very nice job. Nice, nice job. Nice job. Welcome everyone. Welcome listeners. I am your host, Drew Clown from Mafia, and we we have a special treat for you today, and this is the Halloween episode of 2020, and uh, tomorrow is October 31st, Halloween here in the United States, and uh, that makes tonight Mischief Night, AJ. Do you know what Mischief Night is? Of, of course you do. You're probably going to go out, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's pretty much, uh, what I remember, you go out and TP or toilet paper but people's houses, but... Uh, I don't know, in this quarantine business, TP is a rare commodity. I can't see people tossing too many of that. Maybe one square. Not even one square away. They're going to be using something else. I wonder what they'll substitute for TP. You know, they, they TP the house and they throw it all up in the trees and all that. And hopefully it doesn't rain because then you can't get the stuff off. And uh, a lot of raw egg throwing and staying out past curfew. These towns have, uh, a, lot of, a lot of towns in the country have uh, different curfews to keep people inside off the streets on Mischief Night. Even even in Halloween too, uh, because of all the the uh, the vandals and uh, everybody's out there. But I mean, and of course the, the the ceremonial pumpkin smashing. Now I never I never would have partaken in any such of a, a, a ruthless and vandalistic ritual. But uh, I may have been around some of those uh, those folks back in my day who uh, participated in such activities. And uh, yeah, maybe I did turn t- turn the. Uh, the blind eye, um, but you know it was fun. It's what kids did. It's what you had. It's the only thing you had to do. That and bobbing for apples. Go check out our old uh, uh, season zero podcast. We I did a whole little little mini mini episode back on uh, oh boy, quite a few years ago, but about uh, bobbing for apples. But now all those uh, those kids back in the day who participated in those activities, they were all probably senators and congressmen. <laughs> And uh, I'm a podcast host. Anyway, so uh, did you did you like the trick or do you like the treat, AJ? Do you have any uh, preference there? No, I, I always preferred the treat. I I don't really remember anyone ever doing a trick. The only trick was they didn't answer their door. Or they opened it up and they, they give you pennies. Did you have a favorite candy back then or now? Yeah. Oh, oh the Twix, the Twix bar. Yeah, I, I like the Reese's Pieces. I mean, it's, uh, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's Pieces are good, too. That was in the old E.T. movie. But, um, yeah, when I was a kid, I'd go around the neighborhood at least three times. It was a plan. And now, you know, they go two blocks and they're exhausted. But, uh, you know, uh, and I wasn't talking about one or two blocks when I was a kid. I mean, you know, I would track some miles back then, miles upon miles, and then all that with just an old potato sack. I'd have an old potato sack you know, launched over my shoulder and I'd have, uh, three, usually I have like three different costumes. The first was my commercial grade costume, which, you know, a little plastic mask and some sort of plastic, uh, uh, top suit that I get at the, you know, some sort of department store. And, uh, the second one I'd go around with just a mask, usually a werewolf mask or something spooky and scary, just simple. And I'd have my regular clothes. And then by the third time I go around, I just have a white T-shirt with some fake fangs hanging out, maybe some fake blood, or uh, you know, a hat or something. Baseball hat. Say I'm a baseball player. In be, in, in, in between uh, innings or something, I don't know. But uh, bags and bags and, and barrels of candy, and uh, you go around and, and you know you 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 work with your the other your fellow trick or treaters in the neighborhood, and you you know kind of point out you know the houses that just gave out the pennies. You know you stay away from them. And, uh, you know, as you were going off and on the lawn, you would be like, hey, hey anything good? And you kind of would get the yay or the nay and, uh, you know, get those full-size bar houses where they give away the full-size Snicker bars and Milky Ways and, and Nestle Crunch and uh, a Butterfinger, you know. And uh, 
those you'd, you'd hit up four or five times if you had the chance. So they're the good stuff. They, you know, they would have the good, uh, the high quality, the, you know, the, the more bang for your buck if you're, uh, if you're trying to fill your bag. And usually, you know, some houses would have those nice goodie bags mixed with all kinds of great stuff. And the ones that would give out the silver coins, like, uh, like uh, quarters and nickels and dimes, you'd hit those five times and forget it. I be I wouldn't have to work for a week. Wouldn't have to deliver the newspapers back then. I'd uh, I would outsource it to one of the kids in the neighborhood. <laughs> but uh, the um, oh boy, I remember the days. I'm getting old. I'm getting old, AJ. Now they 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 do trunk or treat or trick or trunk or whatever that is, where everybody just lines their cars up and the kids walk from trunk to trunk. I mean, what what is that? You're in a parking lot. I mean, come on, put some effort into it. And uh, I don't know. I I maybe I'm too old for Halloween. But uh, I remember, you know, you'd walk around and people would tell you, hey, aren't you a little old for Halloween? And uh, I remember I was uh, probably 17, maybe, at the time. And I'd be like, just you look at them with a state of confusion. You just give them that look. And you, you just wouldn't answer until they put something in your bag and then you would be off to the next house. So I like to say also uh, hello to my incredible audience over in San Jose, California. Yeah, I'd like to take a moment to recognize them. I've gotten, after my Facebook episode a couple of weeks ago, I must have gotten 100 emails, nice emails, thanking me for speaking out about um, some of uh, some of the employees actually alluding to to uh, being, you know, working in the, in the big tech industry. But they were very thankful, very thankful. And I want to thank everybody out in San Jose, California, for listening. And, um, you know, I we're, we're thankful that, you were very appreciative of us taking up the issues around censorship and which we take seriously here. So, uh, thank you. And, uh, here's a little song I'm going to play here a little song by, uh, written by Dion Wardwick and, um, it's called, do you know the way to San Jose? But it was written by Burt Bacharach. Did you know that? 1968, 1968. So we, uh, want to thank you all thank you and subscribe and like and uh, follow our podcast if you do one thing whenever you're listening to us today just take a moment we really do appreciate it but take a moment and follow us or like us on whatever podcast you're listening to us and subscribe it helps helps us out tremendously um we really do appreciate it uh if you'd like to join us on our social media it's at two clever mafia on all of the different social medias you can find us anywhere and we'd love to have you. You can check out our website for more information, www.twoclevermafia.com. If you'd like to help us out and support, you can do that there as well. So we are going to take a short break, and we are going to get into our Halloween special edition. Is this a special edition episode? No, this is just, oh, I apologize. This is just going to be a 2020 edition. All these editions, there's different levels and different, there's the gold, platinum, so this is going to be the 2020 edition as opposed to, I guess, the 2019 edition, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just work here, folks. I just work here. But, yeah, we're going to be uh, right back with our uh, our trick-or-treat. We've got some great information. Uh, you know, just sit back, relax. Um, kind of a lot of did-you-knows kind of stuff going on about Halloween and uh, who celebrates it, who doesn't, what it's all about. Um you might have heard some of it before, but I, I think it's 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 definitely going to be some. Uh, we have definitely have some lesser known uh, Halloween rituals that we're going to share with um, our listeners, and uh, hopefully, everybody, uh, we we are able to share that power of knowledge that we love to love to share and right AJ and spread amongst our our listeners here in the Two Clever Mafia podcast. So, uh, oh, well, we're doing a yeah, yeah, we're also doing a little section. We're gonna kind of. We had a little survey out there for our 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 top is it top ten AJ top ten yeah we got our top ten Halloween movies so uh, I don't know how far it goes back because I see some I'm not going to spoil it but I see some on the list here that go back as far as uh, looks like 1978 yeah yeah so there's there's definitely there's definitely some old ones on here and there's oh, there's some new ones too there's some new Halloween movie you know. Yeah, we got some of the classics and uh, some that, I don't know if that really is a Halloween movie. All right, well, we'll talk about it. We definitely will, uh, we'll get in, we'll, we'll get into the down and dirty about it, about this Halloween trick-or-treat business, and uh, then we'll finish it up with uh, a nice little uh, 
little tease there about what's coming up next week. We got the election, but uh, right now we're going to get through this Halloween and this mischief night tonight. So I got to be careful walking out to the parking lot. So we're going to take a short break and we will be right back after these messages. Well, hello. Thank you once again, AG. Ooh, this, this music is spooky. We should just keep this soundtrack on. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Too Clever Mafia. Getting a little sidetracked by the audio there. You are listening to the Too Clever Mafia podcast, and this is going to be our trick-or-treat Halloween edition. And uh, is it, it is a special edition, AJ, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to call it a special edition because everything we do is special here at the Too Clever Mafia podcast, and... We are, uh, yeah, let's keep that soundtrack going throughout this whole segment. How's that? This is this is some good stuff you got here. I don't know. This is the AJ Spooky Sound Mix. Okay. And we'll see how long you can keep it lasting. Keep it in the, keep it in the background. Nice and, nice and low. Gives it a little bit of ambiance. A little Halloween spookiness to our show. And hello, everyone. Hello, listeners. Uh, once again, I am your host, Two Clever Mafia. And this is the Halloween episode. And, well... We're going to start, uh, we're going to jump right into this one, AJ. How about that? We're going to jump right in. And so what is Halloween? Well, it, it's obviously a tradition. And it started, uh, I think, back with the ancient, uh, the, the, it was an ancient Celtic festival. Uh, I, I can never say the word, but it was uh, Samhain. Am I saying that right, AJ? When people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off the quote-unquote ghosts over time and Halloween kind of evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating and carving jack-o'-lanterns and festive gatherings downing uh, the um, uh, costumes and eating treats and your chocolates and your Twix bars and your Snickers and all that fun Reese's peanut butter cups can't forget about that my favorite and um, but there are some people that typically do not celebrate Halloween for one reason or another and, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, they don't celebrate any holidays or even birthdays. You know, some Christians, some Christians believe that the holiday is associated with, with Satanism and, uh, or, or, or paganism. And so they just are against celebrating. And I know last year I took my grandkids around to get some candy and somebody had a sign on their door that says, we do not participate in this pagan holiday. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, how many eggs are going to get smashed on this guy's front door? But, uh. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Orthodox Jews, they don't celebrate Halloween due to its origins in, as a Christian holiday. So, uh, you know, and other Jews may or may not celebrate it. Uh, it really, uh, it, I guess it's an option, right? But, um, and did you know, AJ, this is a did you know fact with this spooky theme music playing, but did you know that one quarter of all the candy sold, um, for the entire year in the U.S. is purchased for Halloween. And I don't know, because I mean, I eat a lot of candy now and then, but but uh, yeah, 25% of the candy that is sold for the year is sold for Halloween. Uh, you know, and uh, that's that's a huge, uh, probably a billion dollar industry, I'm sure. But And um, something I also, I, I another interesting fact, and AJ can attest to this with his, his pets, but uh, millennials are buying more and more costumes for their pets and back in uh th this this was from 2017 but uh it was about 16 percent bought costumes for their pets and now it's upwards of like 35 percent of millennials buy costumes for their pets and that's neat no I, I don't mind that you gotta uh uh custom uh your pet in a halloween costume definitely hit us up on the uh the Instagram or the Facebook and tag us at, at the Two Clever Mafia. And what is it? It's hashtag Two Clever Mafia. And we would love to uh, see the pictures of your pooches and your cats. And uh, I guess if you have other animals, turtles, bears, all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you have a pet bear, but although we did do a When Bears Attack episode, you can check that out. If you uh, trying to stay healthy and safe away from bears. Anyway, so colonial Halloween festivals. Let's get back into this. Uh, they also featured... Uh, the telling of ghost stories, like we were saying earlier, and uh, all kinds of mischief, all kinds. Uh, you know, we, we talked earlier about TP and houses in the last segment and egg throwing and all that stuff and pumpkin smashing. But by the middle of the 19th century, um, the 
annual autumn festivals were common. But uh, Halloween was not yet celebrated everywhere in the country in the United States. But then the second half of the 19th century, America was flooded with new immig- immigrants. And these new immigrants, especially uh, millions of Irish, uh, you know, fleeing the, the Irish potato famine, helped popularize and, uh, the celebration of Halloween nationally as they, they, they came into this country. So if uh, you wouldn't really associate the... Uh, the Irish with uh, with Halloween, but but it's true, it's true. So, and uh, like I promised in the earlier segment, we've got some some really lesser known rituals from Halloween. I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but we have, uh, you know, what what traditions and beliefs that uh, today's trick or treaters pretty much have forgotten all about. Many of the 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 obsolete rituals, if you want to call it that, focused on on uh on the future instead of the past you know and and, and the living instead of uh, instead of the dead and the spookiness of, of of halloween and in particular uh many had to do with uh helping young women identify their future husband believe it or not and reassuring them that uh, that they would someday with the luck hopefully by next halloween be married and in the 18th century ireland again this may have had to do with a lot of the immigrants coming to this the United States from Ireland uh, a matchmaking cook uh, might bury a ring uh, in her mashed potatoes and uh, on Halloween night hoping to bring true love to the dinner whoever found the ring so yeah and over in Scotland yeah I know AJ this is pretty interesting right over in Scotland uh, fortune tellers used to um, recommend that an eligible young woman named uh, a hazelnut for each, and I like hazelnut coffee, but for each of her suitors, she named a hazelnut and then tossed the nut into the fireplace. And the nut that burned to ashes rather than popping or exploding, which probably was kind of dangerous back then, and as the story went, uh, represented the girl's future husband. So based upon tossing the, the, the hazelnut into the fireplace, so it, whatever one uh, exploded, I guess, was the, the husband. I don't know if the legend is true. And... and uh, some versions of the legend obviously the opposite was true the nut that burned away symbolized uh, a, a, a loved one or a love that would not last so another tale i have for you here is if a young woman ate uh, sugary, uh, a sugary sugary concoction made of walnuts hazelnut and nutmeg uh, before bed on halloween she uh, that night would have a dream about her future husband and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of, a lot of history around uh, women back at, with in Halloween and, and you know the way that they approached the, the the whole culture back then. Young women tossed apple peels over their shoulder at one point, hoping that the peels would fall on the floor. <laughs> Sounds silly, but fall on the floor and uh, in, in the shape of their future husband's initials, right? And uh, they, they would try to learn about the future by peering at egg yolks floating in the bowl of water and. And stood. This is all kind of crazy stuff, right? And stood in front of mirrors and darkened rooms, holding candles and looking over their shoulder to see if they could see their husband's faces. Now, and I tell you what, if I was standing there, AJ, AJ's kind of biting his nails over there in the sound booth. But if I was standing there and I was holding a candle in a dark room, looking into a mirror, and someone's head appeared over my shoulder, I would, I, I, I would probably scream. I would probably scream. Um, I, I'd run out of that room screaming. I don't know. I wouldn't be there to begin with, but if that was the case, I'd run out of there screaming, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, then there's other rituals, obviously. They were more competitive, and some at, at some Halloween parties, and the, the, the first guest would, uh, to find a, a, a burr on a chest, chestnut hunt, would uh, be the first to marry. A lot of marriage things going on around Halloween. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of people, and people, some people really enjoy this holiday. They decorate, and it's one of their favorite holidays. And, and so there is kind of a... Uh, a, a romance, I guess you can say, right? Sur- uh, uh, surrounding the holiday, if you look at it from that, from that angle, and what you know what happened back then. But, um, you know, others. Uh, the first successful apple bobber. We used to go bobbing for apples. You listen to the old podcast we we have about when I used to bob for apples when I was a kid, uh, back in the season zero archives on YouTube and 
It's probably still on Apple and all the other podcasts. It's, it's way down there, though, but it's for, I think it's called Bobbing for Apples or something. I don't know. And we'll, we'll, we'll post it in a link. But um, the first successful apple bobber would be the first down the aisle. So once again, marriage, you know, Halloween was a big day for, for uh, uh, prospective, uh, prospective brides. So, um, you know, it, a lot of, lot of unknown history behind Halloween and uh, definitely something worth looking into if you, you got some time on your hands to really learn where it came from. And, you know, the history of trick-or-treating, though, I, and this is something AJ brought up. In the late 1800s, there was a, a move uh, in America to mold Halloween, right? And, uh, yeah, this is right around my 20th birthday when this happened. No, there was a move to mold America into a holiday that was more about community and more uh, of kind of a neighborly get-together than, than all about ghosts and pranks and, and the witchcraft that previously surrounded it. And at the turn of the century, Halloween parties for both children and adults became the most common way to celebrate the day. So parties which would focus on games and have plenty of food and, and, and it would be the season of, of festive costumes and, and all of that. So parents were encouraged by the newspapers back then because we didn't have the internet and community leaders to, to take anything frightening or, or grotesque out to, to get it out of Halloween, just to, to throw it out. Uh, you know, they wanted to kind of mock at this in a better way. And, uh, you know, because of these efforts, Halloween has lost most of its, the superstitions that I was talking about earlier and the, the religious kind of overtone by, you know, the beginning of the 20th century was gone for the most part. It's still kind of, still kind of around a little bit, right? So then, then the, the Halloween parties started, right? So by the 1920s and 1930s in the U.S., Halloween has become a, a secular but uh, a community-centered holiday. You know, like, uh, like I was talking earlier on my podcast about uh, Trunk or Treat. Some communities never even heard of it. Other ones do it all the time. Some don't do it at all. So, but uh, with, with they would, some, some communities have parades and, and town-wide Halloween parties and and, uh, you know, and, and featured entertainment, all kinds of featured, you know, fun entertainment, despite the best efforts, however, of many of the schools and communities, vandalism began to plague some of the celebrations in many of the communities during this time in the 1920s and 30s. So they had to kind of change that a little bit, right? Because even today you have Mischief Night, you know, today is Mischief Night, the, 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 the night before Halloween, All Hallows Eve, right? And, uh, yeah, you never heard that, AJ? Yeah, that, I think that's what it used to be called back in the day, back in my day. But, uh, so, they had to work on the vandalism part, but by the 1950s, town leaders had successfully limited the, those vandalisms, and the, the Halloween had evolved into a holiday directed mainly at, at the young, which makes sense, right? Some of us never get old, but it was directed to the young, and then due to the high number of young children in the 50s, and, you know, this country was flooded, with, with babies and the baby boom generation, I guess you can call it. Parties move from, from the town center, civic centers they used to have them in and in, into the classroom or the home where they everybody could be more easily accommodated. And between the 20s and 50s, I'd have to say, the centuries, it was a centuries-old practice uh, of, of the trick-or-treating was also kind of uh, revived, I guess, because trick-or-treating was a relatively inexpensive way for an entire community to share the Halloween celebration and kind of get together, get out, and get to know your neighbor and all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, in theory, families could also prevent tr tricks being played on them by providing the neighborhood children with small treats. So that's kind of where it came from, where it was, uh, you know, give me a treat or I'm going to hit you in the head with an egg. So it was kind of a, a, a strong-arm tactic, I'm thinking. I'm... I'm, I'm that's what it's looking like here. So, thus, a new American tradition ended up being born, and uh, it just continued to grow. Halloween just continued to grow from the 50s on, and in today's, they say Americans spend at least $6 billion annually on Halloween. $6 billion with a B. Wow. On Halloween. And then, and it, it really, it, it makes it that the country's second largest commercial holiday after Christmas. That's why, uh, you know, in August we start seeing pumpkins for sale because they want to get this money out. They want to make that money as quick as possible, right? They want to just get that money in the door and out, you know, in, in the front door, out the back door, so to speak. And then 
think of all the money that Halloween has made over the years, right, AJ? You have um, uh, all the Halloween movies. And that all, we did a little poll. We did a little poll on, uh, uh, was it Twitter? Yeah, we did a little poll on Twitter. And we wanted to, like, kind of uh, get some of the top Halloween movies and see what everybody liked out there. And uh, speaking of the commercial success of Halloween, uh, the, most of the Halloween movies that come out, they end up being big box office hits. And, you know, you got real classics out there. You, you have, like, uh, movies, well, obviously the Halloween franchise. Who, who was in that? Was that Michael Myers, the guy with the white mask? Yeah, that started back in 78. John Carpenter, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Nick Castle, a couple of other people in there. Not Halloween. It was a young boy. About a young boy named, you, you don't watch it? You never see that? Yeah, it was about a young boy. His name was Michael Myers, like I said. And he, um, I think the premise was he murdered his sister uh, and, and was sent to jail. And then he escaped as a teen. And he, on Halloween night, and then he seeks out his old home and a new target every every year or something. I don't know, but those movies, I think he, they, they, they just got crazy after a while. But it was considered a... a um, classic horror film. Yeah, Halloween is considered a classic horror film, film now. And uh, got that spooky soundtrack. And uh, 11 other movies have been made in the Halloween franchise. And uh, kind of inspired movies like Scream. See Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street with uh, Freddy Krueger. You got uh, Friday the 13th with uh, Jason. Jason Voorhees running around with the hockey mask on. And... Uh, uh, there was uh, a, a new Halloween that came out, I think 2018, a, kind of a revival. Then uh, there's uh, some kind of more family-friendly Halloween movies that are out there. Uh, Hocus Pocus, uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. But that movie kind of sp- freaks me out. I watched that with the grandkids. I, I don't want to watch that. And uh, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of doing with that one. Beetlejuice is also on the list. But Beetlejuice is, I don't know, a Halloween movie, maybe. Kind of, I don't know. And then uh, the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. That was always a, that was always a hot one back in then. Every year you watch that over, and he he always uh, he was looking for the Great Pumpkin. You ever watch that? Yeah, I never really was a big fan of the Charlie Brown franchise. I kind of found it kind of boring. You know, there was some funny things in there where was it uh, Lucy with the blue dress would hold the football for Charlie, and Charlie would go kick it. I think it was Charlie, right? Yeah, he would go try to kick the football, and uh, she'd move it. It's kind of a bully tactic. I don't know. Uh, I found it amusing back then, but now looking at it as an adult, I'm thinking, you know, hey, uh, that wasn't the nicest thing to do, you know. So, so that's, uh, hopefully you learned a thing or two about Halloween, AJ, and uh, any of the mafians out there, anybody uh, really looking to uh, to brush up on their Halloween knowledge before, uh, before our election. We're going to have a real scary election next week, right, AJ? Yeah. Yeah, the presidential election is uh, next week, and folks, I got to tell you, it's scary. We're, we're going to probably do a special episode, you know, an actual special episode, uh, probably uh, the, the Wednesday following the election, but I, I don't know. I yeah, What do you think, AJ? You think it's going to be decided? No, I don't know. We'll see who wins. Um, we'll see who wins, and, uh, you know, America will keep going strong as usual, no matter who wins, but we definitely will... Uh, it's going to be interesting, I'll tell you that much. There's all kinds, you know, and every, every news station says their, their, their candidate's going to win, and it's a shame we talked about the news, but the news shouldn't have a candidate. But they do. They do. There's not much anybody, any of us can do about it. All we can do is, um, you know, go out, cast our votes. Hey, did you vote yet, AJ? Oh, you did. Okay, yeah, so did I. Yeah, so did I. I, I dropped, uh, I, I, I filled out the little, I got a little mail-in ballot. And I filled it out, and then uh, I dropped it off at the town square, and uh, in, in the middle of town. And um, I don't know what the big deal is about whether you vote in person or you vote by mail. As long as your your vote's going to be counted, but uh, I don't know. I guess some folks say they have to wait hours just to drop off the actual um, ballot ballots, right? Yeah, some some folks say they have to drop off. They wait hours just to drop off the ballots in the box. And because they're not letting people vote in person, I said, wow, I, where was that? And I was looking, uh, I think it was like Ohio and some some states. And if you have, uh, um, 
you know, you live in one of those states. That, that's that's tough. That's tough. I mean, can you just drop it in a regular mailbox? Or you got to drop it in the, uh, I don't know. I think it's different everywhere you go, right? I got a, a couple more things to talk about. We're going to take a short break. And don't forget to, uh, you know, if you do anything, folks, like I said before, just uh, like and subscribe, be a listener, whatever podcast you're listening to. If you like what we do here, we love to, we love what we do. And uh, it really helps us a lot if you just go and you uh, you subscribe or, or like or follow us on that podcast service that you're listening to, whether it's Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever. Uh, and you can follow us on social media when we do our special episodes. You get you be first in to know. Uh, follow us over on YouTube. Uh, we we kind of go all over the place between YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you know, follow us on all of them and set up the alerts so that way you get whatever notifications when we send out the uh, the special episodes. Because I think we're going to start doing the uh, two episodes a week. AJ, I know I'm not paying you anything extra, but I think we're going to start doing uh, maybe a midweek, maybe a, after the election probably, but a midweek and then a, a Friday. Because like, I kind of like this two episode a week thing that we did. Uh, you will uh, take a short break and we will be right back after this brief message. It's going to be a long one, AJ. Make it, make it a short one. All right. We'll be right back after this short break. Well, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to our, our show. I am your host. Two Clever Mafia, and this is the Two Clever Mafia podcast, and hope everyone enjoys themselves and stays safe on the uh, over the Halloween weekend coming up, and uh, watch yourself if you're going out tonight, because it is mischief night, right, AJ? We've talked about that, and we got a big week coming up next week, election week. That's going to be maybe scarier than tonight and tomorrow night. There'll be a lot of ghouls and goblins out, uh, you know, but don't forget to vote, but don't forget to vote, and, uh, Visit us on all our social medias. Let us know that you voted. We'd love to hear see a tweet, an Instagram, uh, something on Facebook. You know, drop us a line over on YouTube, or you, you could just email me if you want to, and let me know. I'm just curious, and I want everybody out there voting for, regardless of who who you're interested in, who you want to win the election. Even though the the, the popular vote isn't uh, as important as the electoral college, it still matters because that somewhat guides the electoral college so get out there and vote and check us out on our website www.twoclevermafia.com and don't forget one thing i ask and i've asked this for the last few shows wherever you're listening to us if you're listening to us on spotify or an apple or google or uh wherever uh breaker radio public any of those uh, make sure you, you 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 smash the like button is that what they say aj smashed up no i don't like saying that don't smash that. Just, just, just click it. Take a moment after you hear this episode, before the next one, whatever, and uh, become a fan. Become a fan of the show by liking it and subscribing it. It means a lot to us. And if you have a subject or a topic you'd like us to to talk about, feel free to drop us a line. We'll, we'll you can get involved if, if it's something that uh, something near and dear and close to your heart. And as a listener, we want to be able to give you that content. So, thank you again for listening. And we're going to wrap it up today, AJ. Yo, if you, you're interested in any Two Clever Mafia gear, uh, if you want to get yourself a nice t-shirt or a mug with my mug on it, uh, head over to Teespring. Uh, the link is all in the description and all that fun stuff, right, AJ? Yeah, okay. All right, but uh, and that's all. We're going to wrap it up today. We will uh, be back again, I believe, Wednesday. Next Wednesday, we're going to do a special edition after, the day after the election because... Let's face it, nothing's going to be decided on Tuesday. So we'll uh, we'll see who wins. We'll see who wins. But uh, thank you again for listening. And I am your host, Two Clever Mafia. And that is all I have to say about that, my friends. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>